subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Before we begin this episode of Cut the Clutter, let me get this clarification out of the way. A war is not about to break out between Russia and Japan. Not now, not in the 21st century and definitely not while Vladimir Putin comes calling to Delhi which is over the next couple of days. But some things happened. Russia, Putin's Russia has moved a bunch of coastal defense missiles to one of these key islands in what is called as the Kuril Island chain. Now look at the map of this part of the world. It's a bit complicated and you will, you will see many names you are more familiar with, particularly if you've been reading those Cold War bestsellers, uh, thrillers, stuff like that. So Kamchatka Peninsula, also Sakhalin Island. Sakhalin is Russia's largest island. It has a lot of oil and gas. In fact, even ONGC had invested in some of these properties, uh, some of these assets quite some time back. It's large storehouses. This is part of the extended part of the Siberian region. So this is the Asian part of Russia. Now, next to that, just where Kam Kamchatka Peninsula ends, you see a string of chota, 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 tiny, tiny, tiny islands. Or then these become islets. These are Kuril Islands. Kuril Islands, Russian call, Russians call these Kuril Islands, all of them. The Japanese call some of these their northern territories. So dispute is not about all these islands. Dispute is essentially about the last four. Last four are called Ituru, Kunashir and their Japanese vari vari variations on this. Kunashir, for example, becomes Kunashiri for Japanese. So Ituru, Kunashir, Shikotan, and also Habomai Islets. So the southernmost of these are called Habomai Islets. These are uninhabited tiny islands, but a bunch of them. So effectively, this is like a thin archipelago that goes right up to Kamchatka Peninsula. So the southern end of it, which is the Habomai Islets, the last of these islets is just a few miles, a few kilometers away from the, pla from the place called Nimuro. Nimuro on Japan's Hokkaido Island. So it's very close to Japan. Similarly, if you look at these islands and if you are a Russian national security planner or defense planner, you worry about the possibility that Americans, if the Japanese have these islands, Americans put their bases or their systems or their missiles or whatever, their sensors in these places, then it gets much too close for their comfort. It gets very close to Siberia for them, to their landmass. They don't want any of that. So these islands have great strategic value, Cold War or no Cold War at any point of time. Now, there's a complicated history. Uh, in terms of how Russians came to control these islands and I will tell you that because these islands have changed hands since the 17th century many times depending on who was the dada of the region. For immediate, for immediate understanding after Second World War, when Second World War began, Japanese owned these islands. Russia did not enter the war against Japan until 9th of August 19, 1945 and you remember that date? That is when Americans had already dropped the first atomic bomb on the Japanese and the Japanese generals had surrendered. It is only at that point that Russia decided to get in, join the war against the Japanese. Until then they had not done so. And the Russians then claimed that at that at Yalta. Now, Yalta is a place in Crimea, which again is a uh, which again is a region which is currently in news involves the Russians because Crimea is the region in Ukraine or formerly in Ukraine in a way that the Russians have gone and grabbed and declared a part of their country. So it was in the city of Yalta, in Crimea, that Russians claim that Franklin Roosevelt promised the Russians promised Stalin that look you enter the war against the Japanese and if you do that I will let you keep the ownership of entire Kuril Islands. It was by 1949 that the Russians had taken complete control of the Kuril Islands and they declared them as part of their own country. So Supreme Soviet passed the resolution in 1949 saying that this is a part of Russia, inalienable part of Russia. Now the Japanese never accepted it and thereby lies a story and that's how 
प्रॉब्लम स्टार्टेड जैपनीज पीपल ऑफ ए माइनॉरिटी कम्युनिटी दिस इज ए होकेडो माइनॉरिटी कम्युनिटी कॉल्ड आईमूज ए आई एम यू बंच ऑफ देम यूज टू लिव ऑन दीज आईलैंड सो रशियंस आफ्टर द टुक ओवर दे डिपोर्टेड देम टू जपैन एंड देन रशियंस ऑल्सो रोसोफाइड दीज आईलैंड बाय ब्रिंगिंग इन पीपल from their own territory and settling russians in these places as we speak in these islands about 30000 russians live there is also a sizable russian base in the island called ituru it's a sizable base it's also an air base this is where russians have also brought their fighter planes at various points of time and also their s300 missiles a few years back over which the japanese have protested and now i presume there are s400 missiles also what the russians have now done is that in the island called matwa which is about 11 kilometers long it's not a large island 11 kilometers long they have brought in bastion surface to surface missiles these are missile batteries that you deploy on in, in your coastal areas to take on ships submarines or threats coming in over the surface over water up to 500 kilometers right so it's a it's a sizable range missile and these batteries you can put your, on your coastline to protect your territory now certainly the japanese are not going to send an armada in 21st century to take these islands forcibly and there is almost no possibility that russians will be firing these missiles but these missiles have been brought there to make a political statement we have to understand why that political statement what are the russians trying to say is putin only trying to tell the rest of the world that look you guys are going on and on about indo pacific but i am also a stakeholder in the pacific because just just to the left of what you call just to one side of what you call indo pacific is also russia and i need access to the pacific and my access to the pacific for 12 all 12 months of the year depends on my holding the kuril islands because most of those seas most of the waters around the sea of okhotsk and vladivostok is where russia's large pacific fleet is positioned submarines surface ships everything i don't want to be frozen in vladivostok for any part of the year so the only channels the only strait in this region that does not freeze over in the winter is between these islands and there is no way i am going to let you come anywhere near this now this is also followed just days after russian foreign minister lavrov said what sounded like almost rude words about indo pacific and he said what is this this was an open region uh, with a lot of harmony etc etc why are we forming small cliques here that was just an echo of exactly what the chinese have been saying about indo pacific or what wang yi chinese foreign minister said in the same conference or same summit of the three foreign ministers that is russia china and india so maybe this is a follow up to that and it's also a reminder to japan that look you may be a quad member and you think quad is about indo pacific and it's about china but don't count us out हम भी तो खड़े हैं राहों में राइट अ बिट लाइक दैट दैट वी आल्सो मैटर हेयर एंड वी हैव अ स्टेक हेयर बिकॉज वी नीड एक्सेस टू द पैसिफिक आर एक्सेस टू द पैसिफिक 12 मंथ्स ऑफ द ईयर डिपेंड्स ऑन अस ओनिंग कुरील आइलैंड्स ओवर विच यू हैव क्लेम्स सो वंस अगेन इट्स अ रिमाइंडर टू द जैपनीज दैट लुक दिस इज नॉट ए सेटल्ड इशू एज येट एटलीस्ट दैट इज हाउ आई सी इट नाउ in 2016 also russians had done something similar they had brought their missiles and all and japanese had protested but russians didn't bother in fact if anything they started building a sizable military garrison in ituro now they are saying they will build a garrison in matwa also kremlin spokesman uh, dmitry peskov i read him in tas and other places he's been quoted as saying look this is our territory we can we can deploy our military uh, elements wherever we wish hamari zameen hai we can do what we want with it but we want friendly relations with japan we don't want hostile relations with japan and i told you also that it's not as if the two countries are going to go to war the russians are making a political point to japan to america and in a way to japan's quad partners and also maybe maybe i am guessing but also me but i don't think it's such a bad guess though Uh, the russians are also telling the japanese that don't worry don't feel isolated in indo pacific 
we are also a pacific power and we are right here so we are not getting into a war with anybody it's not as if a free for free for all or a gang war will break out in the pacific ocean but we are also around and you can always count on us at least speaking up to bring back some balance in the region just in case the chinese feel that they have been that they have been isolated by the rise of the quad and also the general sympathy of many other countries in this region with the quad because many others in this region have trouble with the chinese what i describe as the chin pidit samaj that's a lot of countries so russians are now saying hum chin pidit nahi hai if anything russian chini bhai bhai so maybe it's a little bit of a statement like that so i can start with the most recent history of this dispute and then we can review some of the older history also because a lot of these territorial problems are rooted in history 2 3 centuries back and you know what that we sometimes think that we have too many legacy boundary disputes in this subcontinent but you can see that other countries other powerful countries have also inherited legacy boundary territorial disputes for a long time and in some cases like this one all these territorial disputes have come up without any help from the colonial british right uh, this is this was always between imperial japan and imperial russia but second world war onwards 1949 i told you russia announced that this was part of their territory 1951 there was a peace treaty between the allies who had won the war and japan right because all the losers of the war were, were then signing on the dotted line so japan had already given away a lot of its sovereignty over its islands in that peace treaty in san francisco japan said quote and quote that they were giving up quote and quote all rights title and claims to creel islands if that is what happened then what is the dispute about the dispute is about the fact and disputes remains on the books because russia did not sign that treaty why did the russians not sign that treaty because once again everything that begins somewhere comes right back at you it's the wheel of life it's the circle of life so in 1951 Soviet Union said we will not sign this treaty because this is not fair to other countries who were victims who were also victims of the second world war of fascists essentially what they meant was that china is not on the table so just as then they were acting on behalf of china even now once again they are close to china so russians did not sign this treaty because russians did not sign this treaty then the japanese also said all right you didn't sign this treaty so we are not accepting that we are giving away away all the kurils to you these four kuril islands are ours until 1956 soviet union and japan did not even declare the end of their war so they did not even declare peace but 1956 there was again a high level summits where the two countries decided to end the war formally but they still did not sign a peace treaty so after the second world war all the all the combatants had signed a peace treaty amongst themselves but russia and japan did not because of dispute over these four islands it seems at some point khrushchev had offered the last two the two southernmost islands to japan saying that you take this and you settle with us but the japanese did not want it japanese wanted the larger islands also because these two southernmost islands one set is just a bunch of islets which are uninhabited the other one is small so japanese wanted two more further north but the russians said no and that's how this dispute, dispute still remains now how far back do we go with this 1635 to 37 is when a bunch of japanese explorers found these islands and japan began to say that these are part of our territory but nobody was quite there yet these are very inhospitable regions and these regions also have extreme weather conditions then there was a dutch expedition led by martin de vries that went went into the went into the islands they discovered these and they also mapped these and also pointed these out to the rest of the world then a few years later a russian explorer that is vladimir atlasov right why he was called atlasov i don't know but vladimir atlasov got there and he discovered again these islands so catherine the great the great russian queen uh, 
in 1786 said that because these were first discovered by our explorers, they belong to us. And so she took over these islands. But that is where things did not come to an end. See, we also know that in the 19th century, there was a bunch of wars between Russia and Japan, which were both great imperial powers in that, in that region. So 1855, after the Russo-Japanese War, the Tsarist Russia agreed to give these four islands away so the Japanese got this back in 1855. In 1875, the Japanese said that they had full claims to all of Russia's Sakhalin. In 1905, there was once again a Japan-Russian war. And this is the time when you see Russia is becoming, Saris Russia has become much weaker. Uh, Russia is not the power that it later became or it even is today. Uh, and it wasn't Soviet Union yet. 1905 is when Japan attacked Russia again, defeated it comprehensively and occupied a lot of the southern part of the Sakhalin island. And this remained like that. And then finally, when the Second World War took place, the Russians came and they, and they took the islands back and they said, this is now final. So various things happened, uh, 1637, uh, 1697, 1786, 1855, 1875, 1905, when the Japanese again defeated the Russians comprehensively and took even half of Sakhalin Island. Then the war of all wars, that is the Second World War, and then the Russians coming and redrawing the maps and saying that this was promised to us as spoils of war by, by none else than Franklin Roosevelt. So this is a done deal now. Now what is so important about these islands, which look actually on the map, a little bit trivial. What is it about these that is so important that two great powers with great interests in the region and friendship between each other are allowing it to hold their relationship to ransom. So I told you strategically that the strait between these islands is the only one around Vladivostok that does not freeze over in winter. So Russians want, want an access to Pacific Ocean for their Vladivostok fleet. That is a strategic reason, but there are also strong economic reasons and they are not confined to tourism and shipping, etc. Because there are lots of volcanoes here and lots of volcanic areas which are, which are very attractive to tourists. It's not just that. It's also because these islands also have deposits of rhenium. Rhenium is among the rarest of rare metals in the world. RE with an atomic number of 75. Now it is needed for very crucial uses. For example, an alloy of rhenium with nickel is used in the exhausts of jet engines to make turbine blades of jet engines. Actually, you need rhenium to build anything supersonic and that's why it's very expensive. It's also very rare. It's not available in many places. And that also might be one of the reasons why the two countries are so emotional about these islands. Nevertheless, it's something that Vladimir Putin has reminded us and the rest of the world of just on the eve of his visit to Delhi. And remember, Japan along with India, Australia, US is a member of the Quad.